Hello friends, welcome back to Mudstack. In today's session, we are going to talk about the you know CICD pipeline implementation using GitLab. So actually, we are running a series of videos on this topic, and we have already finished implemented CICD pipeline using multiple different tools like GitHub Actions, Azure DevOps, Circle CI. And today we are going to see you know using GitLab. Okay. So I uh, implement a multiple steps over here. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you step by step how to create this CFD pipeline. So first we'll create the free trial account. Okay. And then we'll create a simple project in any part studio. And in this use case, we use GitLab as a code repository as well as our CICD tool. So there is a provision here. We can use external tool like GitHub and the Bitbucket to have code repository and GitLab as a CICD tool. But as, as I said, right, in this use case, we'll, we'll make GitLab as a code, code repository as well as CICD tool. So let's create first the, uh, you know, our GitLab account, trial account. So this guy gives a provision to have, you know, unlimited, uh, you know, private repositories, unlimited collaboration. So we'll create 30 day trial account over here. If you are GitHub, you can go directly uh, and create via GitHub or you, if you want to, you know, uh, if you are ready to insert the details, you can go ahead and do that. So I have created already my account. So let me go to my accounts and login. So let me take, so I have created. Okay. So first thing, once you log into your GitLab, first thing you need to do is add SSH keys. Okay, so let's go to the preferences here and go to the SSH keys section over here. Here you need to add SSH key. Before that, how to create SSH keys? Let me show you that. So there is a command to create SSH key. Either you, you use this command or RSH based command. So either one is fine. Once you Trigger this command from your command line. Okay. Let me show you the you know there is a public and private key there pop up here. So if you pass file name, that key there will be created in that file name. Otherwise, the default file name is this id underscore ed 25519. Okay, in this folder and this file will be created under your user key. Then once you enter, it will ask you for the passwords. So uh, enter your password two times over here. Then, once you've done this, you'll be able to see your file in your SSS folder. Okay. So, dot .sss under my user data. Once this is done, you go to your GitLab account. So, just going to log in here and enter, uh, enter your address keyword here and give title, give expiry date, and say add. Okay. So I have already done that. Then you go ahead and now create a project. So we'll go to our, you can click on this icon and you, this will take you to the panel section where you can create new project. So I'll go and say new project. So here you can create the brand project or you can import it from you know either GitHub or Bitbucket or any other instance of the plan. But we'll create a new blank project. Okay, so just now I created blank project. Let me take you that project. So here it's completely blank. You can see. So this is my project name, and this. Now, what we'll do? We'll add or we'll check in the code to this code report. Okay, so either you can upload manually over here, or we can do. So let me go ahead first and create a project over in this input studio. So let's create the fresh project. So let's just finish. Let me bring that project to my workspace. Okay. Simple in this project, we'll be doing simple one listener, one set payload. Okay, that's in listener, in set payload, we just say. That's it. And this now, whatever is their default, we take it. It's okay. And it's okay. That our project is ready. Let's save everything. So now we need to make changes to our form direction. Okay. The form.xml. 
we need to add some code over here. Okay, so let me show you where we try. So I have that code already in my Manon project. So we can directly take it from there. So if we maximize this, this is the configuration we need to add to our new environment plugin. Okay, so that button will be here. So this is my new man plugin here. And you can add it. This code we are keep on adding to all the CACD pipeline, you know, uh, projects. Okay, so here I just say CACD using the class. I'll say And here, the details which you have given, you guys are familiar with it. Okay. So, once this is done, now our project is ready for checking. So, we'll go ahead and say, Let's check in the code. So right click on project, go to theme section, the share project. And so go here first, create local repository. So create local repository, finish. Now you can see that the local repository has been created. And for other files, there's a question mark here, right? So now we need to add those files to our local repository. From the command line also, we can do that. But right now I'm doing it from the input tool. Just click on commit. So these are the files is supposed to add to a local repository. So right click and then say add here and we so we add a commit message. So very famous commit message is initial commit. Okay, let's say commit. Now we push this code. So now the files are committed to my local repository. Okay, now we commit these two our so just now we have created our what we can do I copy this. This is my repository. I can see that and here I have to check what is my password. I have added my credentials, so let's say preview. So I add one more time because I'm not actually CPS tool. So now code has been pushed to the master branch in GitLab this directory. Okay, so let's go ahead and say push. Okay. Yeah, once you check in your code to the code repository, so you can see that your code is coming on the main branch and you can see the code. Don't worry about these two files. I'll, I'll talk about these two files in a minute. So you'll be seeing your source for directory and your form.xml, your artifact.json, everything is coming over here. Okay. So yeah, so let me talk about these two files now. So the if you if you you know if you have seen other sessions for this CSV pipeline, in every pipeline used to add the setting.xml. Same file we are adding, except one more configurations we are adding over here that is called HTTP header, and that is your job token. This will be used to authenticate your job against Maven. Okay, and this is the value to be coming from environment variable. It, you don't need to create this variable, it will be available, and this will help to authenticate your job with the map. Okay, so this is needed. And the other server, we are keep on using this property to connect to your exchange with your credentials. Okay. So these are the two things. Okay, in this setting.xml, two servers. Okay. Now let's go back. Now this file we have created for CICD pipeline. 
Okay, so here I have simple one job that is deployed, and I'm using the Docker image, Maven Docker image, and then under that job I have simple script, which is we are keep on using same script. Okay, so if you see here, these are the these are the this is the command we are keep on using Maven command. So if you remember, these are the two. Properties we are exercised in the form.xml. Let me show you the form.xml, these two properties. And finally, we are giving a setting.xml, you know, by using minus s switch. Okay. And we are saying that whenever there's a checking happen on main branch, you can have multiple branches for the code repository, but right now we are focusing on the main branch. Okay. So this script, nothing new here. This is your job. So whenever there is a change change happened on this particular branch, your job will get triggered and this script will get executed. Okay. So let me show you the form.xml quickly, which is coming from a any point platform as it is. You can see here. So these are the two properties I'm talking about. So that means I need to create these properties somewhere. Okay. So where we can create these properties. So let's go ahead and you need to go to your setting.xml over here. And in the second dot XML, CI CD. And here you'll find variable section, just expand. So for security point of view, I have added these properties before you know showing it here. You can, you know, you are free to go add here your property here, and you can add say your values. And you can set if you don't set it, it will be for all environments. Okay. Otherwise, you can set here if there are any environments, you can say that just specific to this environment. Okay, and this is a normal property, so don't need to mask it. You can go ahead and say cancel. Okay, so I need these two properties, and these are environment variables. Okay, user defined environment variables. And we saw that we have you know system variables also, right? Environment system variables. Let me show you quickly that also just call trace inside that there file, and this will be this file. This is environment. In okay. so let's go ahead and make a change in our code in our input studio. Let me go ahead and make a little change over here. So what I can do is here is in the form of XML. So let me close all to make sure that I'm going to change to my file only. Let me go here. Let's do and go ahead and you know, properties here. Okay, so uh, instead of adding properties, what I'll do is let me make a change here. So that this is application in the chain. So let's save this and let's commit this change. Okay. So let's commit and push this change. You can see, oh, I want to change to my I don't want to make it to master to master, I want to make it to master to main. So close it, push it. And then we reject it. So what I'll do is first we need to so maybe your main branch is ahead of your right. So what we can do, we pull those changes back in our okay. On that I need to use main and pull the changes. Okay. So main and pulling those changes back to Okay, so I put the change here. Now let's go ahead and now come to this. Go to the okay, so I'm push. pushing to the main branch from my local master. Now changes are from master branch to main branch. Push. Okay. Now let me check. As close, go to our 
pipeline. So you can see that that changed. And I'll put let me check on what it's going to be or not of course. So let me get this number that's in. You can see that you can search on it. So for this change, definitely our pipeline configured. You can see that. Python is running in the city. You can see that. So we need to the execution. Now it will take some time. I take a pause over here. Or I recap what we have done. So we have checked in the code to our GitLab repository and we have added two files. Okay. So one file which is ci underscore settings where I have server information and I have added one more server which is you know taking the authentication part. So job will be authenticated against mapping by using job program. And then in our in our CICD pipeline, you can go ahead and create a pipeline, we get a file called GitLab items ci hyphen yaml and here i have added my pipeline code okay so let's go ahead and see pipeline is still running so let's check this Let's check our endpoint platform. Let's see here. It's getting deployed now. So this will get deployed here and we'll be able to see success for the at the end. Okay. So in coming sessions, we'll be adding you know a uh, lot of things to this pipeline code. We'll be adding caching, we'll be adding uploading artifacts, we'll be you know trying to you know create multiple jobs here. So yeah, so those will be in the coming sessions. Okay. So thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, you know uh, spending your time over here. Yeah, please subscribe to the channel, please uh, share and like. And hit the bell icon so that you get, I know, notification for coming videos. Thank you.